Hey guys, Coach Adam from TeamElitePhysique.com talking to you again today with another Pro Bikini Recap. This weekend, absolutely crazy. Olympia blockers are not blockers this weekend. We have two new Olympia qualified athletes. We have Nade beating out Jessica at the Daytona Pro, getting her Olympia qualification. I went into that show thinking Jessica was the strong favorite. And surprise, surprise, Nade gets her first pro win and gets to the Olympia. But the big news, the news that everyone's talking about, is Yulia winning the Arizona Pro, but not just winning the Arizona Pro, looking a lot better than the last show she did. And I'm going to go over those pictures now. But she won the Arizona Pro, beating out two Olympia qualified athletes, one of them being number four in the world, Daraja Hill. Now, Daraja got third place in this show, but got second to Rihanna, right? Going into that show, I thought it was a battle between Rihanna and Daraja, um, and then you know, lo and behold, Yulia wins the show, um, comes in perfect conditioning, and Daraja actually won, got third place by only one point. So let's go ahead and go into those pictures first, as that's the big story of the weekend. So the first thing I want to go into is Yulia's conditioning and how she pulled it off. Now, if you remember, just a week ago, we talked about Yulia's conditioning being a little bit too much. Now, um, what's really kind, I've been, I've been actually on the phone with her husband, and he's been really, really awesome. Uh, we've just been chatting back and forth. Um, he said he, they watched the video and she did fill out a little bit more for this show coming in a couple pounds heavier at this show, somewhere in the neighborhood of two or three pounds heavier at this show than the last show. Um, and they actually did fill out. And that's what I said last week was she needed to fill out a little bit more. Her having just a little bit more body fat and a little bit more fullness to her physique would do a ton for her physique. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Look at the differences that it made in her overall physique. So this was the previous week where I said, hey, she's too tight. If she filled out a little bit more, she'd have she'd be a little bit bigger. She'd have more tissue if she just had a little bit more body fat. But she could just push calories this week and fill out. You know, all she needed to do was just fill out and bring that right level of conditioning for her to uh, really excel in the shows. She was already doing really good, but was just missing it by a hair, just coming in just too tight. So look at this vertical separation on these hamstrings here. Look at those ham ropes, those pi those piano cord hamstrings right here um, that you can see all the way through. But look at her next week. This is the difference of filling out, the difference of bringing in proper conditioning, the difference of eating the right amount of food and filling out and seeing it in advance. That's the important thing is you got to see this stuff way in advance. You know, um, actually, when I was going back and forth with her husband, he's like, yeah, she ate 3000 calories a day before the show. I'm like, well, that's cool and all. But if it's the day before the show, this is conditioning that you should see, you know, a week before the show. This is two weeks before the show where you start seeing stuff like this where you start filling someone out. So now it's just about developing the eye, getting in tune with that, saying, okay, when do I need to fill out? And even here, she could still be a little bit fuller um, going into like an Olympia level show, just a tiny bit. But this is very close to where she needs to be. She has full crispy tie-ins, really, really good glutes, not fully etched in tie-ins like here though. You see the etching here and you see that grain of separation in the actual glute, the glute there. You're seeing that actual striation of the glute. That is no longer there. Look at the difference. And now that's a lot of people are like, oh, the lighting, whatever. That's not lighting. You can't get <laughs> striation just from lighting here and have the same exact back pose and not have a striation here when all these other shadows are there. This is actually fullness and conditioning. So this is the proper conditioning. Um, she could probably be just a hair uh, a hair fuller, but based on the competition that was there that day, uh, I think that she did a, a great job on filling out and that they picked the right winner. And the, the head judge here was Sandy. So Sandy's got a, a really sharp eye on this. She's the best in the business. Um, and if she was uh, a little too tight, she would definitely be docked for it. Uh, this is, I'm sure she, Sandy probably told you, you could come in a tiny bit fuller, but it was good enough today based on who was around you. Uh, so I'm sure that was probably her feedback. Um, and honestly, it, she might be, perfectly conditioned here. It's hard to say until you see someone fully move. I'm going off of the pictures here. I did see her moving in um, a couple clips online. And the only thing I would say is in the back walk is the only place she's getting beat right now is in that back walk. Uh, when she was standing next to or walking next to Rihanna, um, her glutes weren't as full in the walk. They were full when she was in the back pose, but in the walk, that upper glute needs some more fullness still. Um, but She's potentially a top 10 girl in the Olympia now because look at who she's beating. She's beating Daraja, who's number four in the world. She's beating Rihanna, who's, a, who's got one of the best bikini physiques out there. So let's go ahead and look at those pictures and see how she was able to pull this off. So let's go ahead and look at that front pose first, looking at Daraja and Rihanna. Now, in the front pose, if I'm looking at... Um, the overall bikini lines that I'm looking at, traditional bikini lines, you know, shoulder width, 
hourglass shape, pretty muscle, nothing too grainy or too crazy. In this front pose, I actually would still give it to Rihanna from the front pose. I think that uh, Rihanna from the front, it's just, she's really hard to beat that tiny waistline. Now waistline wise, they're both really tiny waistline. So no one really wins there. When we look at Daraja, as I've said before, the only place Daraja loses is her waistline. That's the one place where she gets exposed and kind of beat on these big stages with um, the top competitors next to her. She is a little bit wide-waisted, but her overall shape is what does it for her. She has wide enough shoulders to offset her waistline being a little bit wider. But when you get next to two really petite, uh, petite athletes that have really small waist, you do look a lot larger in the waistline. Not only that, but her conditioning was still a little bit off this week. Um, you could see her waistline is a little bit bloated, not just... Uh, um, not just a body fat thing. There is some a little bit of a body fat issue, but there looks like to be a little bit of bloating too. Maybe there's some digestion issues going on that week. Um, things happen. You just never know. But this is definitely not Daraja's best. So this is not going to be indicative of what's to come, come Olympia. I know she'll sharpen up for the Olympia, um, but this was definitely not her best package. So not this is not one of those like clear cut things of what's to come at the Olympia, like Daraja's going to get beat by Yulia at the Olympia type of thing. Uh, I, would, I would bet a good amount of money that that's not going to happen. Um, if Daraja is shows up in shape, which I'm sure she will, you know, as she's getting ready for these shows, she's going to get better and better for the shows. It seems to be that what Daraja does, you know, last year, remember, as we talked about going into the show, she going into the Olympia, she lost to Phoebe and then sharpened up, got reached her best at the Olympia and then ended up in fourth place. So now, um, Yulia beating Rihanna was quite a surprise. Beating Daraja wasn't as big of a surprise to me when I, when I was seeing her conditioning, when she was um, posting pics and whatnot. I was like, ah, she's still a little bit off. Uh, I think that she can get beat this week. Um, probably Rihanna's going to take this one is what I thought. I thought it was going to go Rihanna, Daraja, Yulia. I thought that's how that was going to go. Um, but man, would I surprise when I saw Yulia winning. I just didn't even come to my like mind that that would be a possibility. I had Yulia as third. Just, these two are just so strong. They're both Olympians. They're both high level. Um, you know, Rihanna's coming back with a bang this year. She looks crazy good. Her lines are insane. So I just didn't think it was possible. Um, and then when it, when it happened, I mean, it shocked the whole bikini world. Everyone was talking about it like, man, Yulia beat Rihanna. Uh, this is crazy. How good is Yulia? She's doing really good now. She's fixed her, her issues. She was too sharp the last week that she, is she, is she that good? Is she a top five girl? Is she that good? Right. So let's go ahead and look now from the front. I have Rihanna winning. I have Yulia in second and I do, do have, um, Daraja in third here. To be honest, I would probably have Daraja in fourth potentially here, maybe even fifth, just based on the conditioning of her, her, um, her front pose and being a little bit off on her, her waistline. So, um, but let's put that out there. Daraja is still number four in the world, and this is not her best. We do not expect to see this Daraja at the Olympia. I don't want to beat her up too hard because everyone misses here and there. Um, two shows in a row missing. Things happen. It is what it is. You know, I've missed with preps many times before, and I'm sure I will many times again. Um, I've had, you know, perfect preps, and then you, you fly somewhere, and the girl's bloated and has her period or whatever. Things happen. Like, it's just part of the game. Unfortunately, it happens a lot more with women than it does with, with men's divisions. Um, and I think that she is just a little bit off again. You know, I think that if she does another show in a couple of weeks, she's going to probably be close to her best again because she's not way off, but she is off. Now, when we get to the back pose, things become a little clearer on why Yulia won. So first off, let's look at Rihanna's shape. Her shape is crazy, crazy good. High lats, perfect hourglass shape, full glutes. I love, I love her pretty muscle. She's got really pretty muscle where it's round and full and it just, the, the light just shines off of her skin tone. She's got this very good look to her, uh, when it comes to bikini. That's kind of what muscle should look like in bikini. That pretty round, full, good complexion muscle with the hourglass shape, great clavicle width. Like she has a lot going for her and a super, super strong potential once she can fill out her frame all the way. I do think she needs a little bit more muscle to be competitive at the upper, upper levels. For her to be getting a top five or an Olympia Olympia win, she's going to need a little bit more muscle. But a frame like that is an Olympia winning level physique, Olympia winning level frame. So all the potential in the world with Brianna. But the problem is with this show is she came a little too soft in the glutes. You can see the glutes are just a little blurred. Um, in these key areas, when you can, if you want to see someone's, if someone's in shape or not, look in these key areas on the glutes. Look at the tie-in here. Look at the area right where the suit is 
and around the suit, you could see, all right, is the, are the glutes kind of going around the suit? Is the body fat pinched and going around the suit? Just like if you're wearing a, if you're wearing a bra and you have that like layer of fat that's kind of over the bra strap, or if you're wearing some tight underwear and you feel that layer of body fat over your lower back, it's the same thing on the suit when you have um, a little bit of push around the edge of the suit on the lower glutes themselves, you'll see the body fat really apparent there. You'll see it there and you'll see it in the walks really easily um, if someone's conditioned or not in bikini. And in Rihanna, she's just a little bit off. She's just either holding a little bit of water or it needs to be a little bit better condition in the glutes. Now, looking at Yulia, you have none of that, right? She is crisp all the way up. I still think a little bit too crisp, but based on who's next to her, it was a no-brainer. And it's just going to be dependent on, do you win? Does bikini win from the back or does bikini win from the front? Or how are you going to judge that? Um, you know, generally I go as I've judged before and I generally go with what was harder to accomplish. What took more effort does taking, getting in better conditioning, even though it was a little bit too much, a little bit too conditioned, is that harder, more effort to do and still having those round full glutes or is missing your conditioning harder to do? Well, missing your conditioning um, is easier to do, right? You can, missing conditioning is not that hard to do. So uh, I'll go with that uh, as well. Then I'll look at the overall presentations and all that thing. It'd be a really close one. And this one was a really close one. It was only a one point decision. Um, and yeah, I don't know which direction Sandy went, if she went with Yulia or she went with Rihanna. I don't know. Um, that one is very, it's a very fair argument to go either way. I wouldn't be surprised if Rihanna won this one or if Yulia won this one. Um, you know, for me, I would have gone with probably Yulia here too. I would, this one's one of those hard ones where I would have liked to see the full thing in person because I would like to see how tight Yulia is and if there's any flickering of the muscles when she's walking or in her posing routine and how much those muscles are flickering. Um, if there's a lot of striations and whatnot, you know, then I would probably go more so with Rihanna. This one's a little bit harder to tell um, in pictures and that's why, you know, being at a show is always better and this is as close as I can get to it. So I want to be fair to everyone when I say that I'm, I'm, my pick would be Yulia based on pictures. So I still think she's a little too tight. Now, when we look at Daraja, you could see in the area of the glutes, especially around the suit line, um, still off on her conditioning. You know, the, the, the glutes are a little bit in better shape than last time, um, but they're almost touching around the suit um, and just needs to lose more body fat. That's really it, you know? She needs to lose a little bit more body fat, but still, when you talk about these three, when we talk about the fullness and the shape, um, Rihanna technically has better shape than Daraja in terms of her skeletal structure. Um, but when we talk about muscle fullness, Daraja beats her, um, you know, seven days a week on muscle fullness, but she's got to nail her conditioning too. So that's why she finishes third here, almost finishing fourth place. That's the really crazy thing about this show is that Daraja was actually one, pl one point away from fourth place. So let's go ahead and look at those scorecards. You have Yulia, uh, first place. Four points, we have Rihanna, second place with five points, which means um, if there was, it looks like there was five judges, two scores get thrown out, right? So three of the judges they had her, had Yulia in, um, two of the judges had her in first place, one of the judges had her in second, and with Rihanna, two of the judges had her in second, one of them had her in first. That's the way they come up with five points on that. Now, looking at Daraja, 10 points total, and looking at Lacey actually getting 11 points. So another one-point decision. Remember, um, Daraja got her, her Olympia qualification this year by one point. So what's crazy is if she didn't win that first show, she would have two more shows where she wasn't getting her Olympia qualification. This would be a totally different story at, at this point. But luckily, she got that first one, um, even though she was a little bit off on that first one, too. So Crazy, crazy scenario here uh, with Daraja. And remember, we still have, as of today, 32 days uh, to, to before the Olympia. That is more than enough time for her to come in shape and her to pull it fully together. I don't know what they're going to be doing at that camp, if they're going to be keep competing again and get in a little bit better shape for the next one. My recommendation would be to do another show before the Olympia and show, hey, that this was just a fluke the last two. Like, here's me close to my best or at my best and get ready for the Olympia because I'm coming in with a bang. I'm winning this show blocking an Olympia spot and then, um, you know, coming to Olympia to, to win the whole show type of thing and kind of make a, make a standpoint of it. But we'll see if she ends up doing that. There's still a lot of shows. The legions is this weekend. That's a big one. So we'll see if she does that. Now let's go ahead and look at the battle of Nade and Jessica, another surprising one, but two Olympia blockers in this Arizona show, two of them got beat by Yulia. It could be anyone's day. 
Bikini is a crazy, crazy sport. Absolutely volatile. It's anyone's day at any time. Um, that's one thing I do love about the judging. Uh, I really give my hats off to Sandy on that because it doesn't matter if you're a big name or not. You know, Daraja and Rihanna are both big names. I mean, they're that's pretty, pretty up there. You know, we're talking pretty big names. Like if, if they're going to a show, there's not a single judge out there who isn't thinking subconsciously, oh, Daraja is going to probably win this show or, oh, it's going to be a battle between Daraja and Rihanna. Um, we'll just see who's in better shape that day. Like that just naturally goes in judges' minds. Like it has to, right? Because if, if, I'm, if I have a show and I'm, I'm judging a, a bodybuilder and, it, and Nick Walker's in the show and, it's, and everyone else isn't a big name, in my head already, I'm like, okay, probably, probably Nick Walker's going to win this one. You just think it already. And it kind of, you know, you try to not let it sway your decisions, but it's really hard to, to do that because it's already like kind of in your head that this guy's the winner. He beats them all the time. This is how it goes. So my hat's off to the judges because that's really hard to do to, to not just one person, but to two, right? To beat Rihanna and Daraj to someone who's, who's never won a show before. That's, it's a really hard thing to do. So you got to give credit to the judges on that for going with, Hey, the best physique is going to win this day. I don't care who you are, right? That's a, that's a crazy thing. It's a scary thing too. If you're an established name, cause you're like, Hey, it could be anyone's day at any time. You know, you always hear, uh, you know, in the, in the podcast, when I'm with Ashley, she's like, I never go into a show thinking who's uh, that I'm going to win because it could just be some rookies day that day. And that's just how it goes. And that's, that's the truth of things. It's anyone's day in bikini at any day. doesn't matter who you are. Absolute craziness. Uh, man, this weekend was, was crazy. So let's go ahead and take a look at Nade and Jessica and see how Nade pulled off this one as well. So looking at the battle of Nade and Jessica, looking at the overall pictures, I thought it was going to be a pretty close decision. But looking at the scorecards, Nade won with a perfect score. So an absolute blowout. Crazy, right? Perfect score for Nade. So, um, you know, Nade is really, really good. And looking at her pictures closely, she has actually got a, she's a pretty talented bikini athlete. Great clavicle base, great hourglass shape, great fullness to her glutes, roundness to her hamstrings, good separation, but not too much separation and detail in the quad lines. Um, great conditioned core with a little bit of ab detail without full etching of the abs. Good shoulder caps without striations or too much striations and soft lines, even though she's got good fullness. I mean, Pretty, pretty impressive stuff um, that Nade has. I did not realize she was this good. You know, I would have not had, knowing that going into this, I probably would have had it being a battle between um, her and Jessica. But looking at Jessica, again, really, really good competitor, Jessica is. Now, the difference is you could see a couple of things is one is going to be in her posing. Um, Jessica is a little bit more opened up in her front pose. She's kind of opening up and giving a little bit more of that kind of chest front pose where she's up tall and, and proud, right? Which is something that you want to do. Um, but if you look over at Nade, she's more bladed, more of that kind of more sideways pose here where you're not seeing the full shoulder width of her. And I think it actually, for both of them, I think this actually works really well. I do think in the scenario of Jessica, she could be a tiny bit more bladed and to keep her core a little bit more twisted. Because the problem that I see uh, with Jessica is that her core is really flat, but there's not really any ab detail. It's a good flat stomach. But if you look at Nade, she has really good core detail without being too detailed, without being too etched in the core. So that would be the one thing. And this might be, she might have great abs, but she's so tall, up tall that you're not seeing any of that detail. So maybe bring it down just a little bit, bring the posing a little bit more bladed and, um, you know, twist your shoulders over a bit, showing a little bit less of the core. I think that it would benefit her. And also I think that she can get her hips a little bit more straight on facing. If you look at Nade, her hips are full on straight facing um, to the to the judges. And if you look at Jessica, she's a little bit twisted, just a hair, just a, uh, maybe an inch back. So her glutes don't look as impressive from the front. As you can see, you can't really see her hamstring so much as a side view. It's a it's like at an angle view, like almost a 45 degree angle. But if you look at Nade, you're seeing the full side, the full roundness, which means you're seeing the full roundness of the glutes too. So in terms of looking at creating the illusion, Nade is doing a slightly better job not a dramatically better job. It's hard to even see this. You have to have a very trained eye in order to even see this, but that's what separates the differences at the top is the, the little minute things in the posing, the little movements in between, the transitions, how you're holding your pose and whatnot. Um, but they're very comparable physique. I do think that Nade has a, a slightly better waist. Um, also, the other thing about Jessica is she has a really low lat. So when she's opening up her lat here, which she is doing, and I do think she's opening up her lat a little bit too much, she's trying to create this hourglass shape um, by opening the lat up. You can see she's kind of 
opening her shoulders up to create that lat width. And it doesn't look like a um, like a natural bikini competitor. If you look at Nade, she's not opening up her lat, but she still has great lat width, great shape, but she looks like she's just like a natural bikini competitor just kind of standing there, right? You don't want to look like you're trying, right? And I think that her posing in the front for Jessica, it looks like she's trying a little bit. She's opening up. It doesn't look like you would just naturally be standing there, right? It doesn't look normal to be standing there. You wouldn't see someone on a beach like this, but you could see Nade in a picture, right? Nade like in a picture with her friends, just taking a, a quick picture with a group of friends, like on the beach. Hey, here I am, right? That's what bikini's supposed to look like. It's not supposed to look rigid and and like you're forcing a lat out. You can do it to create the illusion, but it has to look like you're just you're just taking a picture with your friends on the beach type of thing. And I think Nade really sells that really well. Physique wise, it's very close, but those little mistakes are a big gap in difference, a huge gap in difference. So. Posing is where it comes in, you know. Hats off to Nadee for doing her homework. Whoever her posing coach is, great job. Um, there's this is pretty pretty solid for her. The one thing I would say is, I'm not a fan of the hair on the shoulders with how muscular bikini is these days. Um, I would I want to see both shoulders, but you know that's a th- there's an argument for both. That's just my personal thing. Judges sometimes don't really care. So obviously in this case they they didn't or didn't hurt enough. But at the Olympia level, I would probably want to see that that hair off the shoulders. Now from the back there is a there's a there's a difference, but it's not a huge difference in terms of like it was from the front. And a couple of things. So one, again with the posing we're going to look at. Jessica is giving a little bit too much diamond, a little bit elbows a little bit too far out. Um, so a couple years ago we had, you know, really wide elbows, you know, people call them scarecrow arms cause they're trying to show more width in the back, but now it's very close. There's a very small diamond in that back pose. There's still a diamond, but a very small diamond. If you look at Nade here, there's a very small diamond. It's nowhere near as big as Jessica's. I think she's pulling her elbows a little bit too wide. She's trying to get her shape to be wider up top. And that's why she's doing that. But I think that she can put her hands a little bit lower and have her elbows a little bit tighter, closer to her to her side. And that's going to be the more modern um, p- posing. Now, this isn't bad posing or anything like that. But again, I'm just talking Olympia level. These little tweaks make big differences and her elbows are just a little too wide. So bring them in an inch or two. Um, that should solve the problem on that. Not that there is a problem. It's just that these little things make big differences. Now, looking at her from the glutes, again, it's not really that big of a difference. She has a higher tie-in. You know, she's got probably going to have more projection to her glute because her tie-in is just higher up. Um, Conditioning-wise, Nade is a little bit better conditioned from the backside. Now, there's going to be some judges that are going to say that this is too conditioned. I do think that she's bordering on being too conditioned or she's pushing a little bit too hard in the back pose. When you have deep, long tie-ins like this, you do not need to push that hard. You do not need to make it so crazy, right? And when she's doing that, you're seeing these adductors really pop out with those deep Vs, right? That is a very deep V. If Sandy was judging there, I don't know if she would have won based on that, right? Some judges are like, hey, we're keeping the conditioning to be realistic. That deep V is one of those giveaways where some of these judges are like, hey, it's too much, right? If you get some of these upper level Olympia judges. So that's something I would tell her to be careful about with the Olympia um, and maybe look at, you know, show that to, you know, a Tyler or Sandy said pictures and show them options. Be like, hey, which one's best? That type of thing. Go to a posing workshop or whatever. Um, before you go to the Olympia, you can go to Pittsburgh and have maybe Etzel look at your posing or whatever. But I do think this is a little too extreme on the that deep V. Um, you're either pushing too hard or you're too conditioned, one of the two, and you can just tone it back a little bit. But because you're so, she's so impressive and she's got these deep almond glutes, those like almond shaping glutes, um, you know, the, the arguments there for it. Now, I think she wins this show on the front pose. I don't think she wins it so much on the back pose because when I'm looking at the, the pluses and minuses, n- n- the shoulder width is about the same. The posing a little bit better with the day. The overall shape is about the same, though I can't see Nade's shape on her lats from the back pose. So from the upper body on this, I would give this to Jessica based on the shape and um, of what I'm seeing. Now, based on the lower body, I will give Nade better glutes. I'll give it more density, better tie-ins to the glutes. They're not fully etched in, but they're very close to being etched in, um, you know, Jessica just doesn't have the deepest tines, but she's got better fullness to the upper glutes too. So it's kind of a plus or minus on who you're going to give that to because Nade doesn't have the, the best fullness on the upper glutes. Of course, because the glutes more spread out lower, it's going to be a little harder to get these full glutes up top. And that's the difference of a high tie-in and a low tie-in. A high tie-in is going to give you that more roundness, easier to get that fullness of the outside glute. 
if you have a longer tie-in, less likely you're going to have that big fullness of the upper glute. It's going to take you a little longer to get that. That's one area, you know, she can get a little bit better on. Um, so, but then when I get down to this area, in a day, I would have losing because there's too much detail, too much hardness in these adductors specifically. In the actual hamstrings, they look good. There's no separation. Um, there's not too much detail. I'm not seeing any um, those those piano string hamstring cords. I'm not seeing any crazy vascularity. Um, but the adductors are deep. That is a deep, deep V here. Um, and you're not seeing that with Jessica. So I would have to go with Jessica from the back pose. But because Nadea is so dominant from the front pose, and I think a lot of being dominant from the front pose due to the errors that Jessica's making in her posing, that could be fixed literally in an hour. Um, I think that that's what made it such a blowout. But it could have been closer. Maybe it could have been Jessica's day if she made those small fixes. I don't know for sure. But that is my take on things. Hopefully you guys learned a thing or two about this weekend. Now, it's supposed to be crazy right now. It's supposed to be all these Olympians blocking spots, but that is not happening. I thought it was going to be crazy these last few weeks with people needing to qualify and all these top people just jumping into these shows and blocking spots and all this. But it hasn't been the case. We even have a show this weekend where there's no big names in it again. I was like, there's so many shows where there's no top teners, no top 15ers, uh, not too many Olympians, if any at all, jumping into these last shows. So strategically, I don't know if bikini is changing in that regard where these girls are, they're needing more muscle now. They're needing better conditioning. So maybe they're just not going to be competing as much. Um, you know, when you get the bigger they get, the less they're going to compete. That just goes with it. That's why you see wellness. They're not competing very often. That's why you said bodybuilders, they rarely compete. Some guys are just doing the Olympia only, right? So it's, it's looking like that seems to be the case. This year has been a little bit different for bikini where you're not seeing all the big names competing as often at the end or jumping in last minute, that type of thing. It's not really happening the way it was before. So is it because the size and they're getting bigger and they just can't do that anymore? They need more time off. I don't know, but it's definitely different. I thought this last part of the season was going to be a lot different. So either way, it's super exciting. The Olympia is going to be crazy. I'll be doing my Olympia video here soon with a prize giveaway as always, if you can guess the top 10. So look forward for that one. As always, teameelitephysique.com for worldwide online contest prep with me. And I'll talk to you guys next time.